few short days before Christmas, and we're in uh, Ashley's store. Ashley Haddon, did I pronounce it right? Yeah, you got it. All right, embellish here this morning, and, and the main purpose uh, today is to talk a little bit about civic ventures and downtown shopping and downtown retail and the partnership between the city and, and uh, the downtown uh, DLA, the downtown uh, business organizations and that sort of thing. But first, uh, we wanted to give you an update on snow, snow operations, since it's obviously the topic of the moment. And Scott Offer, who's with our Public Works and Utilities Department and runs our snow operations, is here this morning to bring you up to date and answer any questions you may have about uh, snow operations related to this particular storm. Scott? Thanks, Mayor. First of all, isn't it great? <laughs> it is. I'm so glad we got the precipitation. Yeah. As much as much of a hassle it is, it's great to get the precip. Um, been a pretty challenging storm. Our crews actually started. We're actually on the street probably around five o'clock last night. Um, as you recall, it started off as a wet snow, kind of a rain snow mix. Around 5:30, we started putting down material, um, salt material, on the streets because we started seeing it build. About 6.30 is when we really started plowing hard and um, throughout the night all the way until probably four this morning, um, our crews just spent time keeping arterials and emergency snow routes open, just kept filling in with snow and the wind and, and uh, finally around four we were able to um, start some other operations. Um, bus routes have all been gone through, so all the arterials, all the bus routes have gone through. Our, our plows or our crews actually went in flying this morning at 8 o'clock into the residential area. So um, biggest things we're seeing out there right now is we had that wet stuff before froze underneath. So we've got a pretty good sheet of ice still out there, but we do have salt on the street. Sunshine today will help activate that salt, but there's still going to be lots of slick spots around. So um, urge caution, but we should start seeing some breaking. Our crews will be working over the next couple, three days anyway trying to clean things up, um, be downtown starting tonight um, with a complete removal operation. Um, probably one of, one of the other things, get message out, we've got crews out, but uh, you'll notice that the north facing traffic signals um, are caked with wet snow, so we've got crews out actively cleaning those as well. So um, between slick streets and those signal heads, um, and then, then the side streets obviously are still snow covered, so um, we'll be at it. For the next few days, so I'd, be, I'd enter, entertain any questions that you might have. What, what caused the biggest challenge? Like you said the wet snow first, and so on. Pro probably um, the, the wet snow didn't really cause mu as much of a challenge as the wind did, and the fact that um, at periods during the night it was snowing really hard, really, really wet, and just blowing like crazy. So um, we had streets. I talked to a gentleman at midnight who was calling and letting us know that we hadn't been on 48th Street. Well, we had been there at 8 o'clock, but it didn't look like we had been there at 8 o'clock. So that was probably our biggest challenge. How big a drift did you guys encounter? Um, on the main streets, probably nothing real big, but we're, we're probably going to see some pretty good-sized drifts out in, like, the outlying areas, probably in the north end of town. Um, Highlands, is, or, uh, yeah, Highlands out around Sco Middle School, Fallbrook area, um, probably going to see some pretty good-sized drifts up there. Pretty unusual situation, uh, having the emergencies declared almost even before the snow comes. I mean, this is unique. It it is somewhat unique. We were pretty confident in the um, in the weather forecasts. We were tracking them pretty closely, and um, seeing that it was going to be a pretty significant storm, we made some calls early, um, earlier than what we had typically done, and, and trying to be aggressive, knowing that we've got the holidays coming up, and not only for the citizens but also for our workers because we've got Christmas holidays coming up, and trying to just stay on top of this thing. So it was a little bit non-typical. Usually we wait a little bit longer. Uh, has that helped calling, especially the parking bans in residential, and calling that early? Well, we'll see. Um, I don't know for sure. Um, it'll we'll see when we what our where our plows encounter. But hopefully we we got it. We got information out, notice out early enough, and um, where it, I think it will help is we'll we'll be able to get those residential streets hopefully open today so that school can go back, get back in session tomorrow. Um, we'll only get down one side, but at least we'll have the streets open where people can hopefully get out and we can get back to school tomorrow. 
So no other band will switch yet to the odd side. <coughs> What's that? Say again. Um, our our plan is for the band to actually switch at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. So we're pretty confident we can get through the residentials today, and then get our folks home tonight. Other than what we'll do in our uh, a complete removal areas, get them home tonight, get them rested, and come back in strong tomorrow and and, and finish up the residential areas. How many trucks? How many people? What type of crew? Right now, we've probably got, in a residential operation, we're right around 100, 100 folks out and about. Um, plus, we still have people on the main streets putting down material and kind of pushing things back. We do have some drifting still going on. So there's 100-plus pieces of equipment out there working at it right now. Can you elaborate a little more on what happens in the snow removal districts that will be happening overnight? Um, areas like downtown, I mentioned, um, the boundaries are all on our website i think they're in the blue pages um downtown havelock college view some of those places will come in during the night time midnight to seven pull the snow out of the set parking setbacks out in the street blow them into trucks and haul off the snow um, complete parking ban in those areas um, from midnight to seven it's actually in effect for the next five nights but hopefully we'll be able to rescind that earlier Other questions? All right. Thanks. Any volunteers for S Snow Angels program will take them. I've, I'm the contact for my church, and I've already taken eight of them this morning. So I think it's going to get busier as we get into residential areas and we start plugging driveways. So. Hey, Scott, if someone wants to do a story with one of the volunteers, should they call um, Pastor Dan? Or? They can call me, and I can set them up with some of the volunteers and, okay. and even some of the people that, are, um, that we're helping. Okay. So. All right. Thanks. Scott, thank you. Thank you, sir. Scott and his crews did a good job. You'll, you'll all remember that that, too, though, is another public-private partnership. We bring in a lot of private crews to work with the public crews and get the mass together to get the job done, right? And by the way, how is the kids' art holding up on the snow plows? You no, know, I don't know. I'll check that out later today. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we do appreciate the help that you give us in terms of keeping people apprised of the rules during these storms and uh, the public cooperation in keeping cars off the streets is absolutely paramount to, and necessary for success so thank you again for uh, keeping everybody informed those who aren't shoveling snow today hopefully are getting a little last minute shopping done and we're here at the boutique this morning uh, to discuss keeping downtown retail healthy and growing. Specifically, we want to talk a little bit about the success of Civic Ventures, Downtown Civic Ventures, a program that uh, has helped spur a retail boom in uh, downtown Lincoln. The organization Civic Ventures is a nonprofit subsidiary of the Downtown Lincoln Association and was formed uh, back in 2007 to promote downtown business development. The good news is that since 2010, 38 new retailers have opened downtown. Livability.com just ranked Lincoln's downtown number seven in its list of the top 10 downtowns. And obviously we have a vibrant retail scene uh, developing here very rapidly. A strong downtown in our opinion is is key to a strong community generally and our efforts to recruit and retain retailers is very important to the whole idea of creating a unique sense of place here in the downtown and here in Lincoln with all the new stores and restaurants plenty of parking and the recently repaved streets there's never been a better time to be in downtown Lincoln Civic Ventures has, uh, was developed through a collaborative effort that included DLA, included the City of Lincoln, uh, UNL, I think also the Foundation and certainly uh, the Vision 2015 group. Lots of people working on it. The city put in 50,000, I think, in, uh, in, in grant forms. And private funds were also donated to provide financial incentives for small retailers. 
So at this time, to tell us more about all this, I'd, I'd like to invite DLA President uh, Terry Uland up to say a few words. Terry, good to see you again. Uh, great to be here on this uh, on a day like this. We're sitting right uh, uh, at a really important juncture of downtown P Street with the uh, Wells Fargo Center, which is a landmark building, this building, Civic Plaza that's going to be uh, started next fall. Uh, this is a, a, a fruition of a, an effort that we started five years ago. And frankly, the first few, few years, we weren't able to see a lot of results. But the last couple of years, it's shown that this strategy that we had of putting this partnership together is really working with all the stores. And if you've, any of you have had a chance to uh, uh, participate in the Shop the Blocks, three Shop the Blocks events, we've had a neighborhood of 700 people uh, shopping those evenings. And, and you can really see the satisfaction of the, uh, the shoppers that have been down here. We're very grateful for the, to the mayor and the city council for funding some of our staffing work and very uh, grateful to 2015 for the, uh, some of the other resources that they've given us, plus the uh, uh, partnerships that we've been able to put together on, a, on, a, on an individual basis with some of the university uh, uh, efforts and so on. So uh, that's uh, kind of a, the, uh, the uh, long and short of that. Uh, Bob Campbell is with us, who's the president of uh, Downtown Civic Ventures. And, as you know, has a long history with uh, retail and downtown efforts. Bob? Thank you, Terry. And, and thanks especially to uh, Mayor Beitler for continuing support. This is truly a, a great public-private uh, relationship that's helping bring back that sense of place that retail had created downtown. And many people had, had lost uh, that vision for downtown uh, when that traditional model of the department store, which I was involved with, uh, was gone from downtown Lincoln. And it's really a, a special a privilege for me to be involved in downtown civic ventures and watch uh, this revitalization in downtown. Things are going very, very well in downtown Lincoln, but retail has a special part in all that. It needs to be alive at the street level. People need to, be, need to be out in the streets and into these businesses. Um, I congratulate those retailers like Ashley for being in here and helping make this happen. And uh, it's going to be exciting as, as Haymarket continues to develop and the Antelope Valley project is completed and that development continues. This is going to be the glue that um, makes it exciting to be in downtown Lincoln. So we, we thank you, Mayor, for for your role in all of this, and, and we invite people to come down and experience this. Those who remember downtown Lincoln and its exciting retail in the days of the 1950s through 1980s, I think would love to see some of the shops that are down here and experience this. So thank you very much. Uh, before you get away, could you just talk a little bit, some of the folks don't know your background, could you just talk a little bit about your history with downtown Lincoln? Oh, thank you, yes. Uh, I was involved with Miller and Payne. It was a family business. Uh, John Miller, who came to Lincoln in 1879, was my great grandfather and started business at that time. It was exciting then. Uh, I meant to bring some of the information about those early stores. <coughs> they developed out of the Haymarket area and along P Street, which was interesting, and continued to, to grow as, as Lincoln grew rapidly. And uh, so the Miller and Payne department store. Uh, build its uh, buildings uh, that you see at 13th and O Street, uh, starting in 1911 and finished in 1915. Uh, we eventually sold uh, our retail business to Dillard's. Uh, tried to keep them in downtown, but that retail model was disappearing. And so in May of 1990, uh, Dillard's uh, left the downtown area and that was pretty much the end of that particular model of downtown retailing. So thank you. But it is exciting to see this coming back in the way it actually started and grew as Lincoln was growing. So now as, as downtown is, is growing again and, and revitalized, we're seeing that retail, that unique sense of place come back to downtown Lincoln. What is, what is the model of retail now in downtown Lincoln? How would you describe it? Well, of, of very unique and independent shops and, and stores down here. Very much the way it was probably in, in 1880 when John Miller uh, started with Captain Winger, a Civil War <laughs> officer who brought him to Lincoln from Pennsylvania. So they saw those small shops, independent retailers develop and grow. 
And I think that's what we're seeing. You know, it's very unique. Uh, it's serving the people that live here, the students, the professionals, uh, but it's also serving the people that are coming in as visitors to downtown because of the events, because of the arts, uh, because of university activity. So it is serving that, but now I think it's, it's reaching that point of so many unique shop, it's shops, it's going to be a place where people are going to want to come, but they're not going to get in the traditional mall kind of shopping model. So I think it will be an attraction. When did the meters go up in price? And are you concerned that that's going to discourage people from coming downtown? Don't they go, isn't that soon that the <laughs> parking meters go up? Is it what, January? When is it? <laughs> the parking meter prices is go up. When we get the new meters to put downtown, mm -hmm. but Late January or February would be a time. Yeah, is, is there a concern that that would take away from the atmosphere you're talking about, from encouraging people just to come downtown to shop a little bit, maybe, or something? Or? In my opinion, no. That's been uh, extremely inexpensive kind of parking. It's still going to be desired parking. People will still come down, and that's still not very expensive. But it, I think it will encourage people to, to go in and use uh, the one-hour free parking in the garages. Um, that was a problem for us in maintaining the old model downtown. Parking was a, a conception people had of, of not being adequate, not being safe in some cases. And I think we've come beyond that. There is ample parking if you just use the parking garages. And uh, they're convenient and very inexpensive uh, thanks to that one hour free parking. And the rates are very inexpensive. I don't think this is going to hurt downtown retail at all by changing those those meters and increasing the price somewhat. What, what did they go to? What, did they, what does it become? In, you know, whenever they go up, is it a dollar instead of 25 cents? 25, 25 for an hour. What would it be for an hour? Yeah, say? No. Well, no, it's 50 cents. I apologize. Yeah. You're right. It is. 25, 30, 50. Yeah. Because I, I come downtown all the time. Should so it, it'll go to a dollar, though. Double in price at the end of January? Is that right? To a dollar. We'll do it at or slightly after we go to the but that'll be a dollar then is there right. as well. What it will do is remember with the first hour free, you'll have a situation that says shopper zones in the garages will be the cheapest parking downtown. First hour free. And over two hours will be one dollar for two hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that the parking. And there's six hundred new stalls with block sixty eight, for example. Block thirty eight. We had one more speaker that, before we get off the questions, Ashley Haddon, who's put this wonderful store together, has been uh, been here for 16 months, 18 months. 16 months today. And very successful, mm -hmm. so she can talk about what it's like to, to put together a wonderful spot like this. Thanks. Thanks. Welcome and thank you for coming out to Embellish today. Uh, like Terry said, my name's Ashley and today I'm celebrating the 16 month anniversary of Embellish being in business. I'm so thrilled to be a part of the downtown retail community and the advances we've made over the past year are so exciting. <coughs> the downtown culture is vibrant. The students, downtown workforce, downtown residents and visitors make this the best place to come to work every day. As you know, Shop the Blocks has been the main focus of downtown retail events over the past year. This event has brought 1,800 shoppers and over $165,000 in sales for participating businesses. I'm pleased to own my store in an area where the community has come together to support local business. Events like Shop the Blocks have ignited a spark and remind our city and its visitors everything downtown has to offer. Additionally, the collaborative efforts of local business owners are outstanding. We are lucky to be in a community that supports one another and understands that a stronger downtown means stronger businesses for all of us. Over the next year, as additional improvements are made to the P Street Corridor, I think you'll find downtown retail becoming even more vibrant. We've had an explosion of restaurants over the past year and the retail businesses are growing, largely in part due to Shop the Blocks and similar retail initiatives. I look forward to the future and can't wait to look back and see how far we've come. Describing your store, how would I describe your store? Boutique? Women's boutique. Women's boutique. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ashley, thank you very much. You know, DLA and the city can set the stage and create an environment, but it's really somebody that's willing to take the risk 
and come down and figure out what the public wants to buy and figure out how she's going to get it to sell and and uh, how she can make a living doing it. And we very much appreciate her taking those risks and being a part of this. So with that, uh, Jennifer Brinkman's here today uh, representing uh, the 2015 Vision Group. Thank you for being here. Did, did you want to say anything? Are you good? I'm good. You sure? <laughs> All right. Dave Landis is here, but I'm not going to let him get started. <laughs> So with that, unless you have additional questions, uh, we'll call it into this. Set to go? All right. Thank you.